Oh, good question. I don't know. But if I go back to the programmer, hit view options, there they are. They have an 08. 08M is what we're, wor uh, we're working with. It's an 8 chip, an 8 pin advanced chip. There's a 14M, which is the same price but has more pins. How about that? Same price, more pins, huh? <laughs> there are three 18 pin chips. There are four 28 pin chips, five. And I think there's a 40 pin chip, and I don't know why it doesn't show there. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. They're more expensive. I like to stick with the 8 pin guy because it, when well, you see what it does. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to do it with a pickaxe, but you could. You probably want to use a pick, which is faster. And, and you know, you could do it. Yeah. I don't see why not. Say again? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful. What was for, the question? What was the question? The question was you wanted to do a repeater controller for ham radio or for yeah. Uh, so if you wanted a repeater controller is a device that when when you're using ham radio and uh, you're using a repeater, you talk into a radio on one frequency and it rebroadcasts it on another frequency. You can do touchstone decodes and stuff like that with it, yes. I mean I built one of those with a different device twenty years ago. It was a 0.8 megahertz. This is running at 8 megahertz. I was running it on a 0.8 megahertz, so it worked. Okay, uh, good question though. Let me get rid of that. Go back to PowerPoint. Okay. One question on the uh, uh, control wire. Yes. What connectors do you use if you don't have the, uh, the old... Mizzle headers? Yeah. Uh, you could, you could turn, if you're doing it on a prototyping board like that, you could put a piece of wire, hard wire on the end of each one. You could, into, the, uh, into the computer. Oh, this plug. You need it. Uh, the Radio Shack sells them. Okay. And that goes from there right to the uh, yes. chip? Yes. Yes. Uh, Peter Anderson also sells connectors, that same P.H. Anderson guy. Um, on my web page, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, DaveBodner.com, in the upper right hand corner it says vendors. There's a, a link. I have about 20 vendors that I work with, and a lot of them will carry those. Okay? All right. Uh, oh, the program stays in the chip's memory until it's manually erased or overwritten. In other words, I can turn the power off. Did you notice when I put power on that here a few minutes ago, it started blinking? Well, I programmed that, I don't know, maybe a year ago. It doesn't go away. Okay. Um, now, modification to the software. What we want to do is have it flash for 10 seconds, turn off for 10 seconds. I'll give you a second to look at the program. It's nothing magical. What is magical might be this. A four next loop. When I used to teach programming to kids, I would say a four next loop, and they thought that was a word, a four next. You know? It is. It's a magical word. Yeah. Well. A four next loop says, count from this number to this number until you get to that last number and then fall out of the loop. Let me explain what happens. I move start up here. High one, low two, which lights one, turns the other off. For B0 is one to 20. Now, B0, here's your first bit of complications. It means, oh, I don't want to do this. That's a variable. You remember when you took algebra x equals seven? You stuck 7 into x. x is the thing that's stored a 7. b0 is one of the variables available on the pickaxe. It's, it's called b0 because it's a byte variable. A byte variable can store a number between 0 and 255. Computer people start counting from 0, you know that. They don't count from 1. Okay. So b0 is going to store the number. For b0 equals 1 to 20, that means the first time it gets to here, b0 is going to have a 1 in it. What are we going to do? Pause for half a second, toggle one, toggle two. What does next B0 say? Go back and get the next one, which is a two. It'll continue, three, four, five. When it hits 20, it says, I can't get a 21. There isn't one. What will it do? Fall to here. What does low one, low two do? Both off. What does pause 10,000 do? 10 second pause. Go back up and do it again. Want to do it? Would you be so kind? Verticalize it. I think that's the technical term. 
All right, I have to find the program, so bear with me for a second. Okay. Program. And it, by the way, why did I use 1 to 20 instead of 1 to 10 if I wanted it to flash 10 times? Or for 10 seconds? Because I was pausing a half a second. Is it going, 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 going? <gasps> it stopped. By the way, that used uh, 25 of my 256 bytes of memory, so I'm at 10% roughly. And it'll start up again. Big deal. The important thing is, can you do what we just did with a couple transistors or a couple resistors and a couple capacitors? Well, you can, but if you want to change stuff, you've got to change components. To do what we just did with discrete components, like two, 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 uh, two 555 timers and stuff, you'd have about 12 or 15 components, and if you wanted to change something, you're changing pieces. What did we do? Boy, is that nice. Okay. Questions? All right, let's continue. Uh, all right, I like this one. Let's do a, now, we have not done a hardware modification yet. Now we're going to do a hardware modification. We're going to add a hardware modification, a button or read switch, so that it doesn't start until you hit a button. You with me? Hit the button, then it's going to start. Okay, now, where, I don't want to use that one. I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm usually more organized. I needed 20 minutes before we started. And I don't know where all my stuff is. But I know what I'm looking for. Uh, that won't work. I don't know where it is, so I'm not going to worry about it. I will use this. Uh, ooh, no, uh, this one might work. You know what? I think it will. I think it will. Thank you. You guys are... You're not supposed to be blinking. Oh, you got to tell us something different. You? you know what? I may have to reprogram. Let's try. What the heck? We're all among friends. Buttons are a, a, not a problem, but something you have to do carefully with microcontrollers. When you press a button, you want to send a voltage to a pin so that it knows there's five volts on there or not. So what I do, down here is a switch. It's a push button switch. It could be a read switch. Doesn't matter. And it's connected to, ah, in three. Remember we were working with out one and out two? Now we're on in three, so we're going to look at pin three. When I push the button, it connects that wire to ground, which is zero volts. Now what's this silliness up here? A 10,000 ohm resistor going to five volts. When this pin is connected to this, what voltage is in 3 seeing most of the time? Even though there's a big resistor in there, it's seeing 5 volts. When I push this button, it's seeing... Why do I need the resistor? If you didn't, if you didn't have a resistor in there, it would be a dead short. Whenever you push the button, the, the chip would reboot. So what that, that's called a pull-up resistor. That's a good name. It pulls that pin up. All right. The soft, oh, I have to show you one other thing. 